Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the UK's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got you on today, a man who is, well, Mr Delicious. He's the man who has been waking up London for over 10 years on This Is Heart. And he's back with the brilliant Travel Cops, which is coming back on Channel 5 tonight from 8 o'clock. I'm delighted to say Jamie Thickson joins us on the phone now. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks, Alex. It must be great to be you. I mean, when we look at your career, to have sustained such a fabulous career that's so successful for such a long period, really you are the envy of show business. It's a nice place to be, isn't it? <laughs> well, I think I've, I've managed to get away with it for uh, this long, so... Thankfully, I haven't been found out yet. <laughs> and then we look at the success of your show, which is incredible. Do you ever consider how many people have sat in front of you listening through their radio? Because, I mean, you could fill Wembley several times over. It's extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, I try not to, so, uh, for two reasons. Firstly, because it, uh, I probably find that pretty terrifying. And uh, secondly, it, I, I think it's important to... It, it's, an, it's a bit of an old radio cliche, but I think it's important to feel like that you're just communicating to one person. That's who you need to focus on, really. So you're not talking to the million or so people that are listening. You're just talking to that one person. I think as long as you keep that in mind, then I think I, I think that's the kind of best way to go about it, really. What is your biggest blessing? Is it the voice, the personality, the charm, the looks? What is it? Because it seems to me, especially with travel cops, nobody's hiring you because they find you a nice bit of trouser. It's purely down to the voice. I guess that's a nice compliment too. Traffic cops is one of those shows that uh, we started many years ago. I, I've sort of become so associated with that show that, that they can't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no real skill for doing something like that. I mean, we've slightly, we've changed the show slightly in so much as um, it, uh, it, it launches on Channel 5 tonight uh, and what they've done is we've, re, we've, we, we've switched it up slightly in so much as I now appear in the show whereas before I was just narrating it. So I now pop up in the show. Apart from that, it's pretty much the same kind of, what, it's what people loved about that show for so many years now. There's still plenty of car chases and the bad guys get caught and sent away and uh, uh, but you know it, 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 it's a it's one of those shows that um that it, it sort of would never fail to surprise me just how popular uh, it has become you know and, it, and and continues to be so well i loved it i mean when it was on the bbc which it was for its entire life up till tonight so well produced and it must take a long time because for all those things to happen i guess that's not an average day in the police force how long are they filming for they film for months, so, so they, what will happen is we have a crew that would sort of embed themselves, I guess, with a, uh, a force, um, for, for in North Yorkshire, for instance, we do a lot of shows with. Thankfully, I'm not too involved in the day-to-day -day filming process, but I do know that they can spend a lot of days sitting around when very little happens. Uh, but, of course, you have to be there for when the exciting moments do happen. And I think it's through that sort of, you know, that, the, the, the days, the, the stuff that they get on the good days, it makes it all worthwhile for all the days hanging around when, when nothing is really happening. Mm. And on tonight's episode, we see the fastest car chase ever seen on British TV recorded by the police. Terrifying. They sent me a clip through. Utterly terrifying. Thrilling to watch on the TV, providing you're not in the same lane as the guy who's doing 400 miles an hour. Certainly on tonight's show, you know, we, we talk about it being the fastest police chase ever recorded which is sort of fascinating in a way but it's always important to remember that you know things are happening on people's roads and they are in you know they're endangering lives it's quite a serious business and not only are they endangering their own lives of course but they're also endangering the lives of people around them because most of the most of the accidents that are, that are concerned with car chases tend to be innocent people who just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time mm. you know the, the the drivers who are trying to escape or, or quite often you know get away without serious injury so there's a serious side to it i think we're kind of shining a light on that you know a lot of the the, the, the stories that we cover can be we cover all sorts of stories because for, for the for these guys for the traffic cops themselves they can have you know it, it, their, their, their work can veer from serious life-threatening pursuits to things that are far more flippant and, and, and humorous, you know, and we cover those stories as well. Yeah. 
And I think it's the sort of breadth of what we do that, that makes the show so appealing, I guess. And the one thing that it always reminds me is I never, ever want to be a policeman. The public can be terrifying at their worst, can't they? Yeah, I mean, they do an extraordinary job. It's funny how a lot of the characters that we feed, a lot of the policemen that we feature on the show, I, I guess we've all become quite familiar with over the years. And I think also the criminals themselves have become familiar with the show. It's, it's interesting how often when they're arrested on camera and they'll look at the camera and they'll say, this isn't going out on traffic cops, is it? <laughs> so they've actually become aware, even they've become aware of the show themselves, uh, which is a relatively new thing that's happened. But uh, um, and just to be clear, it's not like you've been framed where we get two hundred and fifty quid if we are captured on camera on traffic uh, cops. No, <laughs> uh, it's not. Uh, it, I, I want it to be worn as a badge of honour. No, featuring on that show. Do you know what's amazing? I'm looking at you now at 45 years old. What a remarkable career it's been. I mean, to think in 1998, there you were doing Top of the Pops and the Ozone and, of course, Live and Kicking, which we loved. Does it seem like a lifetime ago to you? Because I'm 10 years younger than you. I mean, you were the mainstay of TV as I was growing up. Right, yeah. Well, I, it's nice to still be... You know, it's a, t- it's, a t- it's a tough business to be in, and it, uh, it's, you know, it's always nice to be, to still be working, I guess. You know, it, it, you don't really have an enormous amount of control over your career in, in, if you're involved in TV and radio. You're kind of at the mercy of other people. So you just kind of plug on and do what you do, and I love what I do, um, and you never really know what's going to come up next. But I'm just happy to, st- to still be working. You know? Tell us what it's like to wake up at four or five in the morning for 10 years consecutively. Does that become a strain? Because the good side of being the biggest breakfast show in London is that you're talking to over a million people. The downside is you've got to get up and do it every day. Yeah, it, 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 it doesn't get any easier, put it that way. <laughs> um, it, what's been nice is that my, kind of my working day is quite often done by... 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning mm. and what it does mean is, is I've got two young kids who have arri- you know, arrived since I've started doing that show and I've been able to watch them grow up and be with them you know lots of dads don't get a chance to see their kids when they're tiny you know they'll get home from work late or they sit off early in the morning or what have you and so it's nice you know I can do the school run in the afternoon and spend time with them and go and watch them play football or whatever else they're doing at school so It's kind of been a perfect job for me, really, at this time of my life. And then we look at your co-hosts through your career. You've been pretty blessed, haven't you, when we look at some of the ladies that you've worked with, not only stunning but brilliantly talented and funny. I mean, you're almost only as good in that job as the people you set opposite because if they're dull, the show's going to be dull. Yeah, yeah, you're very reliant on your co-presenter, whether you're doing live TV or radio, because they're there to kind of get you out of a fix if, you never really know what's going to happen day to day. So um, I've been blessed, I guess, with the, with the sort of people that I've worked alongside. And, uh, you know, they've all been brilliant and professional. And, and you know, I guess without them, I wouldn't be where I am now, I guess. I mean, Zoe was probably the most famous that you did because of Live and Kicking. That chemistry was just remarkable. And now you're sat opposite a Spice Girl in the morning. Does that ever become normal? <laughs> I don't know. Really, I get it. So it was, it was. There were two very different people when I when I started doing the, um, live and kicking with Zoe. She had done live TV before. She'd worked on the Big Breakfast, and I'd never done anything like that before. So it was very much the case that I was. She sort of held my hand, really, and she was. I guess I was the apprentice to her. And then, and then with Emma on the Breakfast Show, she had never done radio before. So. In a way, I was kind of uh, keeping an eye on her, really. So, it's, so I guess the roles had been had been swapped slightly. But um, I mean, you know, both of those people make it just a joy to, to to turn up to work every day. So I've been very lucky in that respect. And then, of course, the people you get to meet doing your job. I suppose you never know who's going to be the other side of the studio door in the morning. You get the biggest and the best if you want them. Do you work hard at that to make sure that your interviews, because let's face it, you're not going to have three hours to talk to people. You've got to make it count quickly. Um, how tough is that? Is that a skill that you have to work on daily? Well, it depends who the, I guess it, it depends who's coming on, really. It's, it's not often that, 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 that 
I'll be interviewing someone I've never interviewed before. <laughs> So in that respect, a lot of the people that I know and are friends, and so I guess that makes it easy. Interviewing new people or people you've never interviewed before, that, that oh, there's a little more preparation goes into that because you just have to understand more about them and mm. what interests them and what buttons to push and what to avoid. And so it really depends on the on the person themselves. Like for instance, this week we've had Robbie Williams in, and I'm, you know, I've known Robbie for 20 years, so. And we, you know that that's that's just like just chatting with your mates. Whereas there might be a new Hollywood actor who I've never met before, who you know, I'm, well, I have to do a bit more, a bit more background mm. on. But you know, so it depends on the person, I guess. I think the best compliment I can pay you is that you make it all sound very easy and look very easy. That's the skill of a pro, and you certainly are that. Jamie Thixton, really lovely to talk to you. Travel Cop starts tonight on Channel Five at eight o'clock. Did you share a flat once with Adam Wood yet? By the way, no, I didn't. And that was someone, that, that, that was, that was uh, a joke that was made, on, I did a show called Rock Profiles with David Walliam and Matt Lucas, and during the course of an, uh, of an episode of Rock Profiles, that was, a, that was made as a joke, which then I think made it onto a Wikipedia page, which I've then, I've then for, for the last probably 10 years I've been asked about, uh, and it, I'm afraid it isn't true. Is there no way of having that deleted? Because you must be sick of being asked about. Well, I guess it's people something to talk about. It's filled thirty <laughs> seconds, isn't it? Question, to be honest. So Apologise to Adam. <laughs> hey, listen, it's been really lovely talking to you. Uh, good luck getting up in the morning to do the show. Congratulations on everything. A big star, Jamie Theakston, returns with Travel Cops tonight on Channel Five. Nice to talk to you. Thank you.